YouTube account. All right, but Pastor Eric, good, go right ahead. Grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Certainly grateful to Reverend Dr. Flores for this opportunity uh, to be present with you on this evening to share with you the word of God. I invite you to consider with me a passage that is found in the book of 1 Peter. I wanted to continue on in that theme, that vein of uh, developing unwavering faith. And there's a beautiful passage that is found in 1 Peter chapter 5. And I want to look at verse 10 and 11. You will find these powerful, prolific words penned by the Apostle Peter. Listen at these words. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Briefly for a few moments, I would like to reflect from this passage and talk for you from talk to you from this theme after you have suffered a while. After you have suffered a while. My brothers and my sisters, we are now 10 days into this new year. Uh, we are we have approached this new year with optimism and energy. Uh, things are going, uh, things, uh, we see things changing. But more than that, we see a lot of things that are, have remained the same. Uh, there's still violence and inequality in our world. There's still oppression in our world. There's still gun violence that pervades our city. Uh, things are just going chaotic. Uh, and not only that, all of us are going through our own personal storms. We're going through our own personal times of tragedy, our own time of trouble. And in these moments, we are called, many times we have to ask the question, Lord, how long? Lord, how long am I going to deal with all of the things that I'm dealing with? Lord, how long will I experience the hurt and the heartache? Lord, how long will I continue to be broken. Lord, how long? Well, if that's your question today, then you and I, we're in good company because the Christians that Peter is writing to, they are also undergoing immense persecution. They are suffering for the cause of Jesus Christ. These Christians, they have, they have professed and they have subscribed to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet and still, they're finding themselves having to stand firmly on their faith. This book is written to encourage the Christian, listen, not to just go through on how to go through as a believer. That not only are you got that you got to go through, but he's teaching us how to go through as a believer. He does make a distinction between how to go through uh, as a believer, uh, how or, or suffering rather as an evildoer, as well as suffering as a Christian. He says that those who suffer as an evildoer, they merit their suffering. You, you get what you pay for. You do the crime, you do the time. But those who uh, suffer as a Christian, they are illustrations of the grace of God. Thank God for those who have gone through the trials and the tribulations of life, because you can testify if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? So he comes to the conclusion of this, of this letter. And before he comes to the conclusion, he says that we ought to be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Satan, you and I know, seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. But here is how you and I can withstand. Here's how you and I can move forward. We can stand on our faith. He says, stand firm on the faith. Stand firm on the faith. You got to know that God is who God says God is. That You got to know that you know that you know that you know. And the only way you can know that you know that you know is you got to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. There's something about the word of God that helps you to go through those times of trouble. It's something about the word of God that gives you a reason to dance even through the storms of life. It, it's something about the word of God that gives you the strength to navigate through the vicissitudes 
beauties of life. It's just something beautiful and amazing about the word of God. Then he comes to the conclusion. He says, and now the God of all grace, that word grace permeates the whole of this book. That, that is to say that grace pervades, uh, permeates the whole of our Christian life, that no matter how bad life may be, bad isn't so bad because we got the sufficiency of God's grace. The reason why all of us are making it today is because we have the sufficiency of God's grace. Somebody ought to be able to testify this evening that God's grace is more than enough. Yes, God's grace is more than enough. Yes, through my pain, God's grace is more than enough. Through my heart hurt, God's grace is more than enough. Through my sorrow, God's grace is more than enough. He says, the God of all grace who has called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Uh, that is to say that you and I are saved tonight. All of us ought to be able to testify that we have been saved by the power of God. We ought to be able to dec declare like the hymn knowledge and say, I'm saved uh, by, the, by his power divine, saved to new life sublime. Life now is sweet and my joy is complete because I am saved tonight. Somebody ought to declare and be thankful tonight that if nothing else, you may not have money, you may not have fame, you may not have fortune, but you ought to be able to declare, I am saved. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up, and I'm tangled up in Jesus that can't nobody do me like Jesus, the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ after you have suffered a while. Let me stake my claim on this text. This text is trying to teach you and I that all that every disciple of Jesus Christ will go through a season of suffering. Every disciple of Christ, every follower of Christ uh, will go through their own season of suffering. He says, after you have suffered a while, after you have suffered a while, that, that's kind of, uh, that kind of uh, perple is perplexing because sometimes uh, God's perspective of a little while is not my perspective of a little while. Uh, sometimes God's perspective of a little while, it, God says, uh, a day for me is uh, one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years, years as one day. But you and I, our perspective, that's why we got to learn how to gain God's perspective. Uh, some years ago, brothers and sisters, in 2015, um, I had surgery on my eyes. Uh, I had surgery prior to that. I grew up with cataracts. They took the lens out of my eyes, and I used to have, and I would have to wear bifocals. Oh, it was a terrible thing because they made fun of me. They told me my glasses were so thick that I could see into the future. They said, "But they, they, yes, they, they, they told me. They told me. They told me uh, that I looked like Steve Urkel's brother." I'm trying to tell you. And so I got the, I got, I got the, I got the surgery. And and I, after getting the surgery, I was able. I didn't have to wear the bifocals anymore. Oh, didn't have to wear the bifocals anymore. I could see and nobody looked like trees. Everything looked wonderful. Everything was marvelous. But I discovered something, brothers and sisters, that every so often, every so often, I would have issues seeing fine print. I, I, I would have issues seeing fine print because the, the writing was so small, but the doctor told me that I needed to get 3.75 glasses. Then the 3.75 glasses gave me perspective, gave me clarity on the situation. And all I'm trying to tell you is that through our suffering, God gives us spiritual glasses so that we can see our trouble rightly. Oh, brothers and sisters, aren't you glad today that God gives you spirit, the spiritual glasses of his word? so that you can see your trouble more clearly. He says, after you have suffered a while, God, now what happens after you suffered a while? Uh, that might be your question tonight, preacher. What, what happens? And I only got two minutes to argue this. Uh, what happens after you have suffered a while? Well, I'm going to answer your question tonight. Here's what happens after you have suffered a while. After you have suffered a while, you grow through what you've gone through. Let me say that again. Uh, after you've suffered a while, you grow through what you've gone through. One more time. Uh, after you have suffered a while, you grow through uh, 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 after you grow through what you've gone through. Some time ago, brothers and sisters, I uh, a few years ago, I started a workout journey. I started my workout journey at Planet Fitness. I thought everything, and, and, and I was excited about that journey. Oh, it was an exciting opportunity. I was going to get fit. 
I had this whole image in my head. I was going to be fit. I was going to be buffs. And I, I started this journey. Everything started well. E everything started well on the first day. Uh, but after that first workout session, I went home and I was in pain. Oh, it was terrible. Oh, it was terrible. I was in pain. I couldn't walk. It, I was in terrible agony. Oh, it was painful. And I contemplated saying to myself, I had to, had to take a bath in Epsom salt. I was just aching all over. And the next day I was contemplating canceling my membership and saying, I am done. I'm not doing this no more. It was only until then that I received this word, this wonderful word from an individual that has spiritual implication. He said, listen, where there is no pain, there is no gain. And all brothers and sisters, all I'm trying to tell you is that after, in order for our faith, in order for you and I to develop unwavering faith, we've got to have some painful moments. We, Because anytime your faith is not tested, your faith is trash. If your faith is not developed, your faith is trash. But what God wants to do is God wants to restore you. God wants to mature you. He wants to stabilize you. God, and essentially what Peter is trying to say is that God God wants to make you a mature Christian. God wants to show you how to respond. So watch this. When you go through the next thing, you can look back and say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, if he brought me through this, then the God we serve, he's able to bring me through that. And I don't know about you tonight. Somebody ought to be able to testify as a result of all that you've been through. You ought to be able to testify like Marvin said, uh, I never would have made it without you. I'm sure stronger. I'm wiser. I'm better. So much better. I, listen, I, I, I've learned how to pray because of my pain. I've learned how to praise because of my pain. I've learned how to worship because of my pain. I've learned how to depend on God because of my pain. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, I've learned to depend on God. And I've learned to declare like Peter declared, to him be the power forever and ever. Because I know in God that God is good and and that God's going to keep me in perfect peace. Thus I can declare, uh, thus I can declare, uh, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness veil its lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil when he shall come with trumpet sound. Oh, may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless to stand before God's throne on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground, all of the ground, all of the ground is sinking sand. Yes, we're going to have a uh, yes, we're going to have some suffering. Yes, we're going to have a season of suffering. But after we've had that season of suffering, we'll be able to grow through what we've gone through after you've suffered a while. Oh, hallelujah. Why don't you praise the Lord with these saints? Amen. Praise the Lord for this Thank word. You, I don't know about you, but I needed to hear that word tonight. That was, that was yes. a long message for me. Amen. I know so Amen. you needed that too. Amen. After you've yes. suffered a while. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, God thank is good. Oh, yes. I thank the Every Lord that he's fantastic good up our way tonight to give us this yes. message yes, at Lord. this time for our lives. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank God you. is good. Amen. Thank you. Let's, let, let's just call on the name of the Lord right now in prayer. Father, I thank you uh, for the, the, the seasons, Lord, when we've had to suffer a little, a little while. You have indeed allowed thank these you. things into our lives. And, and sometimes, Lord, we didn't have the proper perspective. We didn't have your God. God's perspective. We didn't, we didn't have, Lord, uh, the idea that you were working something. We were going to get better through this whole situation. But I thank you, Lord, for those on the line right now who have just come out of something. Thank you for what you brought them through. And for those, Lord, who are still in there, still suffering, still struggling, I'm praying, Lord, that they'll hold on a little while longer, that they'll keep their feet on the solid rock tonight. Bless them, Lord. Strengthen their faith tonight to hold on, because they know that the word has said tonight that after a little while of suffering, we will be able to stand on this. Thank you, Lord, for the victory already. We bless your name. Bless the preacher tonight. 
as he as he retires for the evening, Lord, that he may have rest, that he may be replenished. Thank you for bringing him our way tonight and bless his ministry at People's Baptist Church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, Amen. Pastor Judd. Thank you. God bless Amen. everybody. We'll see you in the morning at 8 a.m. on the prayer line tomorrow morning. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Pastor Good. Amen. Amen.